Peace. So today I wanted to share my fourth video in my series about consciousness. And in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit more specifically on brain being a repository transmitter and a receiver of consciousness. And this is important because it's oftentimes easy to conceptualize how consciousness is linked to our form when we perform functions that are both voluntary and consciously directed. So for example, I am consciously moving my hand like this right now. This is voluntary. <laughs> um, I'm also consciously directing the words that I choose to share with you in this video. So it's easy to see that relationship of consciousness to form when we are performing those functions that are both voluntary and consciously directed. Now the question is, is consciousness still the governing factor of those involuntary functions of our form that don't appear to be consciously directed like us blinking our eyes. Imagine if we had to think about it each time we blink our eyes. We would be some dry eye having ass people, right? <laughs> or if we had to think about our heartbeat. What about our respiratory system and our digestive system? Is consciousness still the governing factor of those involuntary functions? And the short answer to that is yes. But I also wanted to take some time to elaborate on how consciousness is not only the governing factor of those voluntary functions of our form, but also those involuntary functions of our form as well. When I say that brain is the repository transmitter and the receiver of consciousness, I'm talking about brain within the context of our central nervous system, which consists of the brain and the spinal cord. In a lot of our ancient traditions, we oftentimes illustrated the central nervous system as being the seat of the soul. In this regard, I'm talking about the central nervous system being the seat of consciousness, which is equivalent to being the same thing as the soul. Um, one of the things, if you look at the central nervous system in like Google images, you'll notice that the brain and the spinal cord has a peripheral neural network of nerves that look like branches of trees that link the central nervous system to the body tissues and the body organs. A part of that neural network is the autonomic nervous system and that autonomic nervous system or involuntary nervous system consists of two halves. You have the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. An uh, easy way to distinguish one from the other is one is about to turn up or being lit, the other one is about to pipe it down. So considering the excited functions such as heart rate increasing, body temperature increasing, having dry mouth or restricted digestive process, fight or flight, you're talking about the sympathetic nervous system or the turn it up or the being lit side. When you're considering the inhibited aspect of that system, such as the heart rate decreasing, body temperature decreasing, stimulated digestive process, you're talking about the pipe it down, the rest relaxation aspect of that system, which is the parasympathetic nervous system. So these systems, which is a part of the autonomic nervous system, also governs water weight or our body temperatures, our heart rate, uh, sexual um, drive, fellas, um, <clears throat> a lot of different involuntary functions of the form. And it's ultimately connected or linked to the nervous system through the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus sits at the base of the skull and is the coordinator or the command center of the autonomic nervous system. Now, why is all of this important? Because even though our form may have involuntary functions, we consciously make decisions each and every day which affects those involuntary functions of the form. For example, because the hypothalamus is responsible for coordinating or maintaining homeostasis or balance of the autonomic nervous system, if we're eating certain type of foods or subjecting ourselves to certain stressors in life or not getting enough rest, that's going to throw off the balance or the ability of the hypothalamus to perform its job effectively, which is going to trickle down and affect the autonomic nervous system and the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. We make choices every day on what we're going to have a fight with or what we're going to take flight from. <laughs> you know, we eat certain foods each and every day, which 
may put us at risk for diabetes or hypertension or various different other things. When it comes to the respiratory system, which is involuntary, we may put certain substances in our body each and every day that restricts the ability for oxygen to be equally distributed to organs in our body. So even though we may look at involuntary functions of our form, we make conscious choices each and every day, which can affect ultimately how that involuntary aspects of our form is going to perform. So I will, this was inspiring, empowering, it was educational, and gave you a brief snapshot of not only how brain is a repository transmitter and a receiver of consciousness, but also how that central nervous system is really the seat of consciousness and ultimately our soul. And based upon the choices that we make, in the previous video I talked about intersectionality, about overlapping social categories and how they can affect what goes on on a conscious level within us we always have a choice of not only what we choose to do but how we respond to phenomena or stimulus in the outside environment so oftentimes we may be in situations where we have a chronic scarcity of resources such as poverty or other different conditions and even though that may create certain stresses in our life we still have to think about what we can do to properly respond to those stressors because even on an involuntary level the conscious choices that we make each and every day will determine what happens to us that we're not conscious of in terms of the form another thing to keep in mind is for many years in western society people were under the impression that we had no governance or control over those involuntary functions but their exposure to practices such as meditation, fast, and yoga, a lot of these other different practices have proven to them that practicing certain exercises or making certain lifestyle changes and decisions can effectively, effectively put you in a position to have conscious governance over even those functions of the form that appear to be involuntary. So i got a snow day today, so I'll be able to get some stuff done that I usually don't get done. But I thank you for taking the time to check out these videos. And if there's something else on my mind in regards to consciousness, I will be uploading that video as well. Peace.